everybody. Uh, welcome to Late Night Help. I'm actually filling in for the host of the show, Mark Allen, who I've known for 20 years. Uh, he's been working as a uh, talk show host specializing in health and medicine for 30 years. And I've known him for what, 20 years, Mark? Yeah, at least 20 years. Can, you... can we tell that story? Can I tell the story? Sure. Yeah. I, so I had applied for a job as a host uh, to co-host with Maria. And and um, I guess I got to number two. Right. Maybe, <laughs> and and I, I think... Maria's co-producer wanted, didn't want me, but she did. I don't know. Anyway, we've been friends ever since. Right. You you were very persistent. Yes. But yes, we be, we became friends after that, even though I didn't hire you, but uh, right. you made that water under the bridge. <laughs> yes, we, will. we will. But let's talk about your new book. It's called Growing Old Sucks. Uh, I have read uh, a lot of books on uh, aging uh and this one had a lot of great takeaways uh, that uh, I would love to for you to reiterate. Your co-author is an ovarian cancer survivor. Uh, yes, stage four ovarian cancer survivor. And as we talked this week, she was supposed to go through her six-month, you know, medical test, but because uh, of COVID, they put her tests off until February. And oh. I can't imagine the pressure that this poor kid has, you know, because she Well, gets that's happening a lot. Um, you know, besides the shutdowns of causing isolation and all of the effects from that physically and mentally, there's people that are delaying uh, their usual uh, medical exams uh, because right. of COVID. So and there's dental that. exams too. Dental exams as well. And, they, and we yeah. shouldn't, by the way. We, we, you got to be diligent and, and careful. And, and both Maria and I have uh, an alternative bent, uh, if you will, in our health, personal health care, I know. But at the same time, I want I want to get my tests done. I actually went two weeks ago and had my my annual physical that was only three years out, oh, overdue. Excellent. Um, I, I know we both believe in preventative medicine and a, a, a more holistic, practical approach to preventing disease before it happens. Correct. Um, and that's going to be an important topic because in 2030, 10,000 baby boomers a day, right, will be uh, facing retirement age. So we're going to have more elderly people. And as we age, uh, there's more, more uh, comorbidities. Uh, so let's get right down to some things that you, um, uh, some tips. You say age with attitude. Yes. Um, look, this is the time of your life when you're in charge. And I have to say that Maria is like, um, uh, she hasn't changed in the 20 years that I've known her. My hair has changed color. I got a little bit this, but uh, she's the same. Um, and we one day she'll write her book on her her beauty secrets and health secrets. She's got a couple out there already, but I digress. Uh, what I mean by age with attitude is you're not going to take it anymore. It's your turn. You know, when we're 20 years old and we're thinking about what we want to do with our lives, you know, you may have a boyfriend or a girlfriend who says, you know, you should do this. And your parents want you to do this. And your Aunt Matilda, and I actually had one, uh, <laughs> she was a great lady, she wants you to do this. And you, you can't listen to these people. You have to just say, look, I'm 50, I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm 80, I'm 90. And this is what I want to do with my life. I'll give you an example. Uh, we interviewed a friend of mine, a man that I've been buying cars from for years and years. My kids buy cars from him now. And he's over 90, Maria. He works 40 plus hours a week, six days a week. I read that. Um that and and keep keep active and keep doing something 
But I, I, I don't know, I have an issue with that. I feel that when you get to retirement age that you absolutely should retire and focus on hobbies more and volunteering and mentoring someone to bring them up into uh, what you're doing. Because in our industry, in the broadcast industry, there's people like, gosh, they're in their 80s and they have not left. <laughs> well, but that's okay. Um, you know, broadcasting has changed since you and I started, and I'm a little bit older, and uh, or a little bit younger, I'm not sure which, but uh, what I mean is that I don't think somebody has to retire because they're 65. I remember uh, when it was mandatory for everybody to retire at 65. Um, Although you in your book, you say retire to something, not from something. And yeah. I like that. Retire yeah. to something. And, Volunteering, and, mentoring. And I believe in giving back the way you're talking about, mentoring people. Um, I'm, I, I coach people all the time right now on how to present as either a guest or even as a host. And it's very fulfilling. And I enjoy working with people uh, in general, but it's, I'm not giving up hosting myself. I don't want to. Before well, I Well, you enjoy it. You yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, well. And what about food? Let's talk about food for a little while because I liked the, you said uh, there's a website that you give in your book for people to find out what 15 nutrients that they're deficient in. Uh, which I don't remember right now. You'll have to get the book to find that. <laughs> By the way, it's still 99 cents for a Kindle version. All you have to do is go to Amazon, yes. type in Growing Old Sucks, 99 cents. You can't. I was it. able to afford it. I read it from front to back. And there were so many gems in there because um, you, you share stories with, with wit. It was funny uh, and um, just little gems. Uh, which I love. You also talk about don't let your brain atrophy. Absolutely. And you know, John Asra from neurogym.com is really huge on the power of the brain. Before you set any physical goals, you have to prepare mentally. Let's talk Absolutely. about that. Uh, first of all, I met John, um, I guess about four or five months ago in person. No, it was longer than it had to. It was it was before COVID, pre-COVID. I think it was November, or December. We were at a movie screening, and I met him. Uh, I had been invited to uh, talk about this movie, and it was it was an honor and thrill. Yes, to, he's to wonderful. Meet him. He and his wife Maria are friends, and they just they just have such a positive, uh, wonderful aura when you're when you're with them. I yeah, love them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, the brain is. What can I'm, you do for your brain? What are your tips for uh, keeping your brain active? Keep learning. Um, I'm a, I, you know, I'm a writer. Uh, this is my first book, but I write commercials. I write public service announcements. I write intros to to radio and TV shows. I, you mm -hmm. know, all these things. I changed it up. Writing a book is completely different and and stimulates different nerve endings in your brain. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm right-handed. I brush my teeth with my left hand a couple of days a week. Um, That's interesting. Uh, that I'm, wasn't in the book. Or, or did I miss it? Wait, say that again? Was that in the book? I think I missed no, that one. No, that's in the book. Oh, I missed it. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I think it's in the interview with the um, the uh, president of the Alzheimer's Foundation. Uh, right, and, and you did say in the book that Alzheimer's, and I agree with you, is not a natural part of aging. No. Uh, I just interviewed a gentleman yesterday. Funny, your hand disappears when you <laughs> go back. Yes. Uh, what is that? The, the, oh. Reverse. Oh, I love that. What's his name? Your hand is covering the name. Do Dr. Timothy Smith. Excellent. Dr. Timothy Smith. Uh, great guy. I not. I, I think I may have interviewed him years ago. He's into uh, natural and holistic health, integrative health. 
really a terrific. Uh, he was a really great guest, and he's gonna. I'm. I've just invited him to be uh, uh, interviewed for my upcoming book. Huh? What did you say? How to live with the hard of hearing, and um, I'm so I'm I'm working on that book. Do something different. That's what stimulates the brain. And it actually apparently creates new neural pathways. So um, again, I'm right-handed. When I'm putting in numbers uh, in a spreadsheet or uh, you have to put in a passcode, uh, I type the numbers in uh, with my left hand. It's just something different. It's easy. Um, I, I, uh, I've been playing uh, some video games that only 10 or 15 minutes a day, and I'm not doing the bang, bang, shoot, shoot, um, pillage a, a village games. I'm doing things that stimulate the mind. Uh, right. And, and what about, um, I loved the chapter on loneliness and grief. Ways for people, you gave a lot of tips on uh, how people can cope with grief, which a lot of people are sadly doing during COVID. Uh, they've lost family members. Uh, you, you had some recommendations in there I felt were really strong. Talk about that. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is knowing in your heart of hearts, and this is very difficult, that if somebody passes, it's a transition for them. Uh, life is not life as we know it is over, but they are not over. Uh, I believe that they may be watching over us. I know a little bit, woo woo, but. No, I believe that. I believe in angels. <laughs> right, I do too. Um, I wish they'd talk to me in English, not angelic, because angelic is, um, I don't understand it and I'm not listening, and I should be. But um, I think that that, you know, you cannot, when somebody passes and they're close to you, you've had a recent uh, uh, passing in your family. Yes, my it's, uncle. It's, it's, my it's, uncle was uh, like a second dad to me. And uh, yesterday was actually the two month anniversary of his, of his death. Uh, I, I saw him every single day during my childhood and adored him. It was, it was difficult. And it, it is difficult to see my parents grieving, unable to support their other siblings and hug each other and be as close as they normally would have uh, after, you know, the burial. Well, it's, you know, uh, uh, most Western cultures, Jews, Italians, uh, Hispanics, uh, I'm leaving somebody out and I'm sorry, you know, we have a birth. What do we do? We eat. We have a death. What do we do? We eat. It's, <laughs> I never really understood it until, you know, the passing of my mother. Um, maybe even my dad. My dad's been gone for over 35 years. And there was a comfort in having people in that room, you know, back at the house. Everybody's munching in our case, deli, in your case, lasagna, and, right. right? But right. we're eating and, yeah. and, and it's, you're, you're, you're remembering, you know, in your, your uncle, uh, a memory comes to you when, when you were a kid and your uncle did something special. When my grandfather passed away, I remembered that when I couldn't drive and I wanted, I, I had saved for something. And I called them up and said, you know, could you take me to pick up this thing that I wanted? And he didn't feel well, but he came anyway. That meant an awful lot to me then. And in mm -hmm. retrospect, it still does. I did love, um, and I think this is helpful for people, is that we also, um, we did go to a restaurant after and socially distanced, but we had a celebration of his life yes. where everyone stood up and shared uh, a special memory and a lot of it brought laughter and, and, and jokes and about how 
he would say, why did we spend so much money on this restaurant <laughs> if he were here? <laughs> uh, but a celebration of someone's life and remembering uh, who they were a, a, as a person, I think that's what stays with you. The memories, the good memories uh, do not leave you. Um, so that's important when, when you're grieving. I, I think it's a part of the healing process is to hold on to, don't hold on to the sadness, uh, hold on to those precious memories. Absolutely. And by the way, I think that'll keep you young too. Because how many of us know people who are couch sitters, okay? They sit on the couch all day long. Now, watching Wheel of Fortune is okay. As long as you've yeah, done you, something else during the day. You, you refer to those people as the walking dead in your book. Uh-huh. I do. And But don't you know somebody? They're, they may be your age, maybe a little bit younger, a little bit older, and they hit a certain age and they are over. They're done. They're waiting to die. And this book, we hope, will be a roadmap, is a roadmap for somebody to get off their tush and do something. Absolutely. You, know, you, um, you, you have to stay active. Um, yes. You can't, uh, if you are a, a couch potato like that, you're going to uh, have a higher risk deep vein thrombosis. You're going to have a higher risk of heart disease. Uh, Every, oh, you're going to have a higher risk of obesity. Uh, you have to, your body needs to move. It's just a, a, something that I was very fortunate to have learned that in, in grade school, an hour a day in the gym. And I still do the same exercises that I did when I was a kid. You have to do that. You have to set aside the time to get physical activity, even if it's just a walk. I think walking is phenomenal. Uh, Dr. Smith said that uh, when I interviewed him yesterday, that walking is probably the best exercise. It's yes. relatively low impact. Um, I mean, swimming is good too if you have knee issues yes. um, or back issues. And But walking is, is really good and exercise, you have to do it. It's, it's the fountain of youth. Personally, I'm not a big exerciser, and I know that I should be. Um, the only bad Although you like to walk. You did tell me that you do uh, go outside with Carol and you do go for walks, right? Yes, we do it separately because I walk faster. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, I try to walk. I've been trying to walk at least three times a week. Uh, Dr. Smith advises every day for an hour. I agree. You know, every and day. I do too. But I walk every day. Yeah. I remember the Canadian Bob Hope. He lived past 100. And um, I, I'll never forget that he said that his health and longevity was because he walked an hour every day. I, I thought it was because he had a deep tissue massage every day, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Probably after the walk. Yes, exactly. Now, you also say toss your bucket list. I've never heard someone say that before. Why? That must have been uh, 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 Servet. Say that. Talk to your bucket list. Toss, toss, throw it away. Oh, toss it. Yes, yeah. toss it away. Um, you don't need a bucket list. You, you, you can plan to do things. I mean, if somebody were to call you from Chattanooga, Tennessee and say, look, Maria, we want you to be our host of our new afternoon show um, and uh, come on down and your audition is holding hands with your new, with the co-host as you skydive from an airplane. Now I know my answer to that. <laughs> I don't, you know, you don't need to take that big of a challenge. Right. Uh, right. I don't know. I think I'd pass out. I'd forget to pull the ripcord. I think a, a lot of people have said that yes, you know, say yes to everything. I actually believe that no is the most powerful word uh, that you can say. And that, uh, you know, people say they regret not saying yes to things. Uh, I, I have never regretted saying no to something. I, I believe in following your gut. 
And your instincts, like if someone asks you to jump out of a plane, uh, no, <laughs> unless you're, you know, I, I, I do know, I, I did ski jump out of a plane in my 20s, but those days are over. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, uh, uh, my father-in-law, who's 96, loved, loves to go skiing. Uh, he hasn't been in a number of years. When he hit 70, he couldn't wait to go skiing because he thought he was going to get a free pass. And they made it 75. You had to be 75 to get the free pass. So he went at 75. And then he went at 80. And I had always thought that, that my other brother-in-laws had broken their legs when they went skiing with him. So I've always refused. <laughs> And viewing sunsets is on your list. And I like that because uh, I once read that when you view a sunset, it's the only time that time stops. And yesterday in Manhattan, apparently, and in Brooklyn, there were some gorgeous orange sunsets and people are posting pictures like crazy. It was absolutely stunning. Uh, but watching sunsets was on the list of things to do for uh, agelessness. Yeah, I, I love looking at those. I love the, the, you know, a sunset or a sunrise because it's a dawning of a new age, a new day. And I take one day at a time. Um, I plan, but I think that, that, you know, looking at something that's beautiful, whether it's a person, whether it's art, whether it's from nature, I live near the... Santa Monica uh, Mountain National, I think it's a national forest. And I used to go walking in there a lot, hiking actually, and would hike back to the waterfall. Um, there's an Indian village and there's history in that area. And I, it's, it's very relaxing. And you talk a lot about the importance of friendships. Let's talk about that. Look, we're doing something that we haven't done in 20 years. <laughs> you're, you're my friend. You're, you know, friendship, there's nothing better. You know, you can, you know, there's that old saying, you can, you can't, wait, how is it? You, you, um, you can pick your nose, which is disgusting. You can, you can uh, pick your friends. You can't pick your family. And so I take that very seriously and don't let everybody in. Uh, and I guess there are certain levels of friendship. Well, I think I, I always loved what Warren Buffett said. He said, look for three things when you hire people, intelligence, enthusiasm, and integrity. Right. If they lack the third, the other two will kill you. And I find that my friendships that last for 20 years they have that crucial integrity factor. Uh, I am fortunate to have friends still from grade school, but it's that integrity. Um, if someone lacks that, um, I let it go. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> have. Frozen. Let it go. I have I have friends from high school. Um, we were socializing with a couple of them uh, pre pre COVID, and. And I don't think, I'm trying to think of, I, I guess I have one or two people that I still hear about from earlier than high school. But yeah, friendship is important. You need, you know, we come into each other's lives. There's a greater plan that we don't know, which by the way, I really would appreciate knowing. We come into each other's lives. Sometimes it's to help I come into your life to help you. You come into my life to help me. And sometimes we part, and that's okay. We have those memories again. Um, and I have friends that are older. I have a friend today, uh, he designed the uh, front cover of the book. He's 85 years old today. Oh, that's nice. Isn't it? Yes, and very appropriate. Yeah, it is. Um, and uh, and I have friends that are in their 20s and 30s. And I think it's good to have uh, different age groups too. You learn a lot from different people, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, 
being around babies uh, is is really special. And right now, uh, with COVID, you can't be. If you have grandkids or nephews or nieces, you know, you're not supposed to get together with them. And it hurts. It's hard. Right. It's difficult. But well, now you also said trusted confidants are important. Yes. Absolutely. What if you don't have that? What if you don't have a spouse or uh, someone within your circle that's a confidant? Do you, do you still recommend professional therapy for those people? Well, again, I'm not a doctor. I talk for a living. I talk a lot, as you just said. I talk a lot in the book. I talk a lot outside the book. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, I think everybody can can use therapy of one kind or another. Uh, I think that it's I think that it's important. Uh, I think it's important to take care of yourself, and you need somebody where you can you can just dump all the crap that life throws at us. Okay. Um, Everybody. It's okay to pray too. I'm sorry. It's okay to pray. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you can pray to Jesus. You can pay, play, pray Never. to Moses. Uh, Buddha. Uh, Buddha. <laughs> I mean, every. It doesn't. Imaginary matter. friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bobo. My imaginary friend was Bobo when I was a kid. Um, I didn't pray to him, by the way. But you know, it, uh, being. Uh, grateful. I'm grateful for my friendship with you. I'm grateful for my friendship with Servette. Um, I'm grateful for my wife, my kids, my granddaughter, my upcoming grandkid. Um, I Congratulations am, again. <laughs> it's very exciting. And, and I, I mean, life is so great. It does throw a stumbling block at you every now and then. Sometimes it hits you upside the head, just like with Servette. You know, can you imagine going, well, uh, you, how do I do that? I guess. I, Getting a diagnosis. Uh, imagine diagnosis one day across. fine, and then the next day getting a what could be a fatal diagnosis. I do know a lot of people that have gone through that and um, it does nothing else, I think would force you to look at your own mortality more. Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. something like that. Have you had, uh, you know, not family members, but friends your age pass? It, it, no. it you're lucky. Oh, one person. Um, uh, one person from St. Ephraim's from my grade school, it was so sad. Her name is Ellen and, um, she had cancer and she was posting pictures of her, you know, chemotherapy on Facebook. And then just one day she was just gone. I, I, the, the and her, her, her comments, she was yeah. such a positive person and her comments still come up on, my Facebook memories and yeah. I, yeah, she was, she was a beautiful, beautiful soul. And that's, yeah, one person my age. I've had, I've had a number of people pass. My, my broadcasting mentor, Ron McCoy, he was on the air here in the LA area for decades. And what did he pass away from? Cancer. Cancer. And we both, we were both fired from radio stations on the same day <laughs> and as I remember we got together and he got me a little bit happy um, drinking I don't don't like being drunk it's not a fun thing but I guess once in a while it's okay and I was never a drinker no no wow well Hang around me and we'll get you started a little bit. You know. I used to drink something that was worse than alcohol. I used to drink whenever someone, um, when I was in my teens and 20s and people went to bars, I would order a Diet Coke. And I think that's so toxic now. I, oh, 
I fell for that. I wrote about that in my book, Healthy Within. I fell for the ads of who was it? Elle McPherson running on the beach with tab with a pink tab. Right. Uh, they they made drinking diet soda look so fashionable, and it's the worst thing you could possibly do. And fortunately, I smartened up, and I only drink water and tea. You're 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 much better than I am. I mean, I'll have a drink. Uh, uh, with wine. I'm doing a cooking show, as you know. Uh, Although, yes, a red wine in my family is flowing. They have vineyards. Yeah. Uh, I uh, will say, sure, I'll have a glass of wine. And, and I guess I don't drink it fast enough <laughs> because I take two sips and then I'm like, where'd my glass go? Someone always drinks my wine. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. I... So what other tips do you have? in your book for, because in your book, in the beginning of it, you say that you can reverse aging 10 years. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something. Give you me know, a top 10. Oh boy. Let's take a look at the word anti-aging. Okay. I think if we anti-age, it means that we're dead. We're all going to age. But if we age with attitude, if we age with beauty in our and love in our heart, I think that everything works out. We all have to go sometime. But, you know, here are a couple of, I mean, we've, we've talked about them, really. Exercising, um, Exercise. trying something new. I'm sorry, what was the second one? Uh, I don't know. It was 10 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, trying something new. Aging with attitude means, you know, doing what's right for you. You know, you, you know, if we were to go to dinner tonight and we're on other opposite coasts right now, but let's say you and I were to go to dinner and I would say, you know, I really want to go for seafood. And you say, nah, I, you're, I'm in Southern California. I want Mexican because I don't get it. I, I, in Pennsylvania, we don't have really great Mexican food. But Southern California is, the, is great for that. And you have to be true to yourself and say, all right, I want Mexican. Mark wants seafood. Maybe we find a Mexican seafood place. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. And so that we're both satisfied. We're both in the groove, if you will. Okay. And I think that that, that uh, you know, trying new things. I, I'll give you a couple of other things that I'm personally doing. I read a lot. Um, uh, the, I read for work, for my radio show. I read computer manuals to learn how to edit and uh, do, watch uh, uh, videos uh, on, on editing. I read science fiction and fantasy Late oh, night. I'm a nonfiction. I love nonfiction. Do you? Uh, the only fiction book that I liked was The Old War and Peace uh, by Tolstoy. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, another book was Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. Where, uh, I mean, they're the, this giant, um, but I loved those books and thought, oh gosh, this should be turned into a movie, and it was. Um, but normally I like nonfiction. So you like fiction books. I, but that's my, you know, during the day when I'm reading a book like, like this, the Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's uh, that's work reading. Uh, I'll make notes and all that. But to go to sleep, I just, I'm reading about witches and goblins and <laughs> crazy stuff. Uh, it shows that I'm really a kid at heart. I'm 14, 15 years old mentally. Right. And but it's just relaxing. I don't have to. I don't have to report about it. I can just take a deep breath and relax. And I'll read for ten or fifteen minutes, fall asleep. And sleep has to be on your list too. Oh, it, it's really important. Um, I'm not a big sleeper. Or do you? Are you a good sleeper? Mm -hmm. Are you? So you go to bed at eleven o'clock and you wake up at. 
You know what? I always, uh, I actually sleep more than a normal person, believe it or not. People think I don't sleep at all. Yeah. I, <laughs> I sleep nine or 10 hours a night, but oh it's not God. at normal intervals. It's whenever I'm tired. <laughs> um, you know, my, my dad got home at midnight and one of the, when, when, when I was a kid, and one of the things I realized is I don't mind the overnight shift for a morning show because I would wake at midnight because I couldn't go to sleep unless I knew that my father was home from work. And then he'd bring home the next day's newspapers and fresh pizza from the restaurant. So I was up at midnight and I find that, you know, I mean, my father was from that generation that would say, I, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I don't believe that. <laughs> I believe sleep is very valuable. But I, if I go to sleep at 3 a.m., I just count, okay, I need 10 hours, nine, 10 hours of sleep and Alexa set my alarm. Um, so I always get my sleep and it's just at odd times. Odd times. I did, I worked overnight for a couple of years um, producing uh, um, here in Los Angeles. Morning show? A radio show. Okay. And screening calls, setting up guests, uh, it was a lot of fun, really great uh, experience. That's where Ron McCoy, uh, where I met Ron McCoy, uh, who I mentioned earlier. And But sleep is important. And that messed up my sleep because I only do that three days a week. It and does. It that, that's one thing is it does uh, mess up your sleep cycle when you're on an overnight shift. What was your first job? In radio? My very first job uh, was at a, as a camp counselor. In broadcasting. Oh, in broadcasting. Um, my very first job was uh, as an NPR uh, NPR uh, uh, reporter in LA. Oh, okay. Uh, and I was uh, uh, assigned to a station in the LA area that was an NPR affiliate at the time. And... Um, it was, I was there seven years. Wow. I filled in for, I was Brian Gumble. Remember Brian Gumble? Oh yeah. Co-host of the Today Show? Yeah. His assistant. What a work ethic he had. Uh, and I had to go to work when it was still dark outside. Uh, yeah, it's a shift I always, I, I loved being the first one into Manhattan when it was quiet. So I didn't mind the, I didn't mind that shift at all. <laughs> I would, you know, if, if I still think that you and I should be hosting the Today Show, and um, there you have it, uh, huh? I okay. would love to co-host the Today Show. That would be a dream job for me. But I love uh, Al Roker. Yes. Uh, he, he started the same time. Well, he was the weatherman when Bryant was the co-host. Right. And then um, Al is just, uh, he's, a, he's a very talented animator and artist and had his own production company. And he and I, I later got his agent. We had the same, uh, uh, the number, well, there was number one and number two agent in New York City. And uh, both of us shared the same agent. And I love uh, watching his rise. He's, he's, he's such a, he's one of the nicest people you could ever meet. Yeah, he looks. He, I, I have not met him. He looks. He looks like he would be. He, he looks like he. So, would. what other, um, what other tips that you have? You interviewed somebody, Marvin Arnold, ninety-two he, years he's old. The gentleman that I mentioned at the top of the show. Marvin okay. Marvin is in his nineties and works forty plus hours a week, not because he has to, because he enjoys it. It's what's keeping him alive. And he has no health issues. He's some minor things is what he said. He, he put, he doesn't care. He says, I'm just moving on. What did I grow? What final, what final advice do you have for people? Live, enjoy life. Um, I mentioned that I'm doing a cooking show. Well now, okay. And you say live and enjoy life, but a lot of people that are watching it, this are homebound. Right. Because of COVID, their social life is not what it was. Uh, I, I talked to a friend yesterday, uh, David Krell, and he said, all my single friends want to be married since COVID. 
and all the married friends want a divorce <laughs> since COVID. <laughs> well, it's it tried something new. I'll give you two real quick examples. As you know, I always talk about food. I when I need a recipe, uh, and you need to give me something soon. Um, I do this cooking demo. It's anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, almost 25 minutes. And I'm doing it to encourage people to get off the couch and cook. If you're, even if you're single and you're living by yourself, what I made for dinner this week would have been a fabulous um, uh, uh, meal for a night or two. Um, we talked about of, that too. He's been cooking. Uh, uh, David mentioned that as well. He said that uh, since COVID happened, he has been enjoying uh, cooking in, 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 in his kitchen. And it's, 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 it's a release. I find it extraordinarily relaxing. Um, for the most part, my wife likes my cooking. Um, That's always a plus. That's, yes, that's hard. And sometimes I just cook for myself. I make an Italian squid dish and she likes the sauce, but won't eat the, the actual calamari. Well, uh, I have to send you a copy of my little cookbook, uh, Health, Heart and Humor in an Italian American Kitchen. Yes. Oh, please. I will email it to you, a digital right. copy. It's a little, little tiny book. I have posted some recipes uh, on Facebook and someone said, oh, you should write a book. So I just threw it together, but it's my grandmother's recipes Ooh. that I had scribbled on a piece of paper. And I thought, you know what? Uh, I should really put this in a hard copy so that my niece has it. Uh, because my niece was always asking my mom, Nona, can you teach me this? And my mom is always, uh, she has no um, measurements. Right. Well, I don't cook with measurements either. Um, it's, you know, I wish I had the recipe for my grandmother's gefilte fish. I, I oh. right? She made something called Mama Liggy. Now, I wasn't fond of Mama Liggy, which is, a, it's cornbread. And uh, from- All traditions. I think traditions is a part of health too. Oh, There's absolutely. continuity. You know, There's continuity and it brings back the good memories of when the person, uh, like when my grandmother was alive, if, if we're, we're making uh, some of her recipes, it's like she's there with us. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, using, uh, you know, uh, using a, a pot or a pan that was my grandmother's or my wife's grandmother's. Um, that brings back memories and it's, it's really cool. Of course, a lot of the things that I cook neither grandmother would even eat or would be horrified that it was in their pot. But that's another. Why? Why is that? Tradition. You know, okay. They wouldn't eat, you know. How many years have I said to you, I want to come to your, I want to come to the Feast of Seven Fishes? Every Christmas. Every Christmas for 20 Every Christmas, plus years. I have to apologize to you that you weren't, you didn't make it to the Feast of Seven Fishes. <laughs> exactly. That's one of my goals. One year. Okay, that's on your bucket list. That's on my bucket list that I don't look at. Right. Well, we're, we we probably won't do that this year. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll make sure to invite you sometime. I know you ask every single year. <laughs> it's just, I love, uh, somebody once told me that I was in, in previous life, that I was Italian in one life, and, and Asian in another. Well, that's funny. Because and people tell me they think I'm those foods. <laughs> So there you go. Right. Uh, well, I will, is there anything else? Three things that you can tell someone yes. to do today. Uh, the first thing to keep you young, and this is almost guaranteed, is to go to Amazon. Look. <laughs> Uh, the soft cover, which is what I'm holding, is $7.95. The uh, Kindle version is $0.99. Cents. And just go to Amazon. Uh, if you go to uh, growingoldsucks.com, uh, there's a little video on there. I think it's a little dated now, and I should do something about that. But it, it'll explain the book as well. And well, something 
$1.99 is actually a great price. Uh, I, I see a lot of books that are $25 uh, when I'm in the bookstore. So $7.99, I will make sure to pick up a, a soft cover because I got the 99 cents version because I wanted to read it right away. Sure. So, um, yeah. But I mean, where can people, what's your website? Because you're also a, you do production work for companies and yeah. you're a host for hire. I am. Uh, I, MarkAllen.com? No, it was, it's MarkAllenTV.com, but uh, it's not up there yet. It needs and it's A-L-Y-N. Mark, A-L-Y-N. And to everybody out there, uh, you know, growing old sucks, but it doesn't have to. And it takes place in your own mind, your own brain. You make it happen. I agree. I have one final question for you. Yes. No. You recently <laughs> appeared on a, a friend's podcast, Stephen Mead, and he yes. interviewed you and he had asked you, who was your most surprising guest? And you said it was me. Yeah. But Stephen had not followed up and asked you why. <laughs> he moved on to the next question. And why was I your most? Because I have been on Late Night Health as a guest several times. Yes. Um, because you're upbeat, you're funny, um, you're, you, you have good information, and um, you also helped arrange for me to be on Stephen's show. So I would just, you know, it's funny. I don't have a favorite guest. I've interviewed 30. Well, he said most surprising, the most surprising interview. Oh, most, it's, yeah, it's, you know, when we talk, um, you know, we, we don't get excited. We just, we just chat and it can be a year. Sometimes it won't happen again, but in the past, it's been a year, even too, that we don't talk and then it's just picking up like, Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm pretty much like that with all my friends. We pick up where we left off. There's yeah, no, exactly. which is a great to thing to be able to do. And so I think that, that what we, and that's, that's in, that's really an important thing. Um, uh, and in a guest, I mean, I don't become friendly with my guests for the most part. Once in a while I do, uh, there's a, 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 a doctor, a, uh, who is, uh, he, he's terrific and he's so close to me that, uh, physically close, uh, that, um, you know, I'll stop by his office just to say hi once in a while. I haven't done that since COVID, but, uh, and he's a great, a great guest. Um, but nice. with all, all the people, excuse me, that I've interviewed uh, from uh, entertainment, political, uh, I've done financial stuff. I mean, all these things, um, there are just a few people who stand out and you're one of them, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. And again, it's www.markallentv.com. Right. Uh, get the book. Uh, I really enjoyed reading it. When I love a book, I read it from front to back. Uh, when I don't, I call the person and said, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> but most books I read front to back and yours was one of them. It was very entertaining. And um, Mark's a sense of humor and his co-author, um, they, they share real life stories. Uh, so thank you, Mark. I will speak to you soon. I look forward to it. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Bye.